today. AI goes mainstream and infiltrates the classroom. We live in a schizophrenic kind of a society where we seem to hate artificial intelligence, but also embrace it at the same time. But we have to ask, is AI really life? Or is it just an imitation of life? Thanks for joining us today on Something's Happening Here. I'm Steve Hicks, welcome. Welcome back, friends. If you're watching as we broadcast this, then today is Thursday. And before we get started on our main message for today, I just want to point out, every single time that we talk, I mentioned to you um, that if you are on Facebook, you have to like the page and then also change your notifications to be alerted when we publish a video. And artificial intelligence is the reason why that is true. Um, you may think because you're following the page that that means whatever we do is going to show up in your newsfeed. But that's not the case because Facebook and really all social media, everything on the internet does this to some degree, but Facebook in particular has an artificial intelligence algorithm that determines what you get to see based on a number of different things. So by you actually changing your notifications, you're telling Facebook, you're telling the AI that you specifically want to see this thing and therefore it prioritizes it for you to make sure that you see it. So I, you know, I, I just thought that was really worthwhile to mention because I ask you to do it every day, but this is why. It's because we're up against artificial intelligence and we have to figure out how to work with it, right? We can't just pretend it's not there, you know, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. We, we have to actually just engage it on its own terms. All right, so today we're continuing the talk about AI, but we're going in a slightly different direction because everything changed a few months ago. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Have you heard of chat GPT? I imagine if you're a teacher, you, you may have, and it's, it might be the bane of your existence. Chat GPT has only been around for a couple months now. So it, we are broadcasting this in January, toward the end of January, which means this technology has been here for like two and a half months. It is an artificial intelligence that creates writing according to whatever paradigm you tell it. So uh, I'll, I'll read from this article by Forbes. The headline is, how can we teach writing in a chat GPT world? And the opening paragraph, it says, reactions to open AI's newest iteration of a language stringing algorithm are many and varied. And I'll just stop there because this technology, um, it quite literally responds to what you tell it. So you can say, um, I am selling solar panels, right? <laughs> and so create me a thousand word sales letter as to why you need this solar panel for the following reasons. And it will do that. Like in just a few seconds, it will create a thousand word sales letter according to whatever you tell it. You can tell it, use the following keywords, blah, 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 blah. And it will pepper those keywords into the article for you. Um, it, it, it's an incredible technology, but it's also a really scary technology uh, because as soon as students figure out that it's out there, and they have, <laughs> suddenly they're not writing their own papers anymore. They're asking some, some machine to create their homework for them, which can you know potentially tank the already really struggling education system. Back to the article. The reactions are many and varied. It's the end of high school English. No, it's not. Let's ban it from schools or let's have, let's have teachers use it. Okay, maybe not. No, it'll be just like using a calculator. Maybe we should take it to court because the whole thing is based on massive plagiarism and unauthorized use of creator's work. Or it might be good for getting a job, but not for getting a date. <laughs> so all of these different reactions exist out there. Um, I, I picked this article to introduce the concept of this chat GPT to you, but also 
because it says something a few paragraphs down that I think is really important to point out. It's not so much prophetic, it's just kind of a commentary on the world around us. It says this here. Call it a format or a template or even an algorithm. Schools have taught students to build structures, to craft sentences to order, to treat writing as a dance of performative hoop jumping. Schools have taught students to assemble essays to satisfy algorithms for judging their writing. Algorithms that may be used by either humans or software with little real difference. Now, we can clearly see that this type of writing can be completed, not brilliantly, but passably well, by a piece of software that literally has no understanding of what it's writing. And here's the point of this. If this kind of writing can be done by a machine that doesn't have a single thought in its head, what does that tell us about what we've been asking of students? <laughs> and as a point of, of extra special irony here, um, that was a question, but that sentence did not end in a question mark. So maybe even the author of this article should learn how to <laughs> do his writing a, a little bit more accurately. So... Uh, this, this really spoke to me. I have spent so many years of my life studying writing, creative writing, essay writing, every kind of writing. I'm a writer. I've, I've been for a long time and someday maybe I'll even work with uh, Talking Donkey International to let you have access to purchase a book that I, that I wrote a number of years back. So stay tuned for that. My point though is that all of those years, 10, 15 years of various writing classes can all be boiled down to this? That a machine can do it pretty much as well as I can? So therefore, what does that tell us about what I have been filling my head? If a machine that can't think can do what I do, then what in the world have I been taught? <laughs> well, here we are in this, in this paradigm where... <laughs> We're inching towards something that life is not. The title of the episode this week is Imitation of Life. And I hope that we're seeing why we picked that title, not just because of the movie reference. And by the way, again, if you get that movie reference, please let me know in a, in a comment and you and I can be friends. <laughs> but uh, it's also because, because AI is an imitation of life. It's imitating a scholarly paper. It's imitating a professionally worded sales letter. It's imitating um, even neurofunction, potentially, right? It's imitating things, but it's not actually life at all. So what do we do with that? Do we fear it? Do we embrace it? I imagine... Um, that there are as many different reactions happening in your respective minds out there on the other end of the internet right now as there are at the beginning of this article. <laughs> you know, there are many and varied. Let's embrace it. Let's hate it. Let's criminalize it. Let's, you know, proliferate it. Because it can be good, but it can be bad. And it's going to be both. I mean, name me a technology ever that has existed that has not ultimately been both good and bad. <laughs> it doesn't exist. So this is going to be the same. And as Christians, though, as believers in the Holy Scriptures, our job is bigger than just accepting or rejecting this particular technology. It's recognizing what the technology means spiritually. And we talked about Elon Musk a few days ago because he seems to be at like the forefront of the, the advancement of technology right now, as well as kind of in the middle of this entire artificial intelligence debate. He's trying to use AI to create human functions that were not there before uh, and other such things. Well, he is also um, an interesting character to discuss because he is kind of bipolar in his feelings towards AI, where he loves it and wants to create more of it and use it for human flourishing and make it prolific and integrate it into medicine and all those things. But he also fears its misuse and a Terminator-like eventuality. 
So is it as interesting to you as it is to me to learn, as this article here from Fortune tells us, that Elon Musk is actually at the heart of ChatGPT as well? <laughs> Elon Musk's history with OpenAI, which is the maker of AI chatbot ChatGPT, um, as told by the chat, it, the chatbot itself. So they got they got ChatGPT to talk about um, Elon Musk's involvement there. Now I'm not going to read from that, right? I'm just going to read this first paragraph from the article, which tells us something about. ChatGPT and all of the ways it's trying to imitate life. It says, ChatGPT has been making waves this week following its test release by OpenAI, the company behind it. The artificial intelligence chatbot has evoked amazed, amused, and concerned reactions to it and generally created major buzz on social media. Many have speculated ChatGPT will disrupt Google's search business and, and Google... Google's like one of the biggest traffic stores on the internet. Something like 40% of all internet traffic is <laughs> owned by Google. So that, that's a real potential huge disruption. It can also debug code, write in a famous author's voice, and help students cheat, among many other things. So there we go. Right there in black and white, we're seeing the potential positives. It's going to debug code. Oh, can you just like hear the collective sigh of relief from all of the computer programmers who have wasted hours and days and weeks of their lives trying to find that one little piece of code that's wrong and now they can just like feed it into a chatbot and the chatbot fixes it <laughs> that's a game changer for them and yet it also can help students cheat so i think what we're going to see is a counter technology to this like um like a uh, chat GPT scrubber where you can put an academic paper into the scrubber and it will tell you if it was generated by AI or not. Something like that. We're going to have to see a, a, a pushback against this because the teachers unions are simply too powerful <laughs> to let this go on. That, that, that's my prediction. We'll, we'll see if I'm right. But the actual point here, the conclusionary point is that all of this is not real life. It's an imitation of life. And as cool as it may seem, like if you are a student up against, you know, a 14 page paper deadline and, and it's the night before and you're still on page one, maybe you're thinking this is the best thing in the world for you, but it's just an imitation of life. Maybe it'll get you a good grade on the paper, but it won't actually put that knowledge in your brain. So you're no better off in terms of what you know than you were in the beginning. It's just an imitation of life. And Jesus Christ, he's not so easy all the time. I mean, he tells us things like, you will face tribulation in the world <laughs> and, and other such kind of heavy truths like that. But he also says, I have, don't, you know, I've overcome the world. Take heart because the world is tough, but I've overcome it. And here in John chapter 10, in verse 10, he gives us this wonderful promise that I love. He says, I have come that they, meaning you, you may have life, not an imitation of life, friends, but actual life, and that you may have it more abundantly. That's the God that we're seeking after. He wants to do so much more than write your paper or give you some sort of temporary technological benefit in your body. He wants to actually recreate your entire body in a resurrection so that it will never decay ever again and give you perfect, divinely centered knowledge that will never pass away. So much better than ChatGPT could ever do or any of these AI networks could ever do. So I pray that we're not going to be misled by the imitation of life today but instead go to the source of life and receive it more abundantly. So come back tomorrow for our final segment this week. Uh, we're going to have another theology day and talk and kind of bring all of these ideas together. So make sure you're subscribed so that you can join us. Uh, I already mentioned what to do on Facebook, you know, like the page and change your notifications on YouTube, subscribe. And for a similar reason, also hit the notification bell 
and on talkingdonkeyinternational.org. Go to the podcast page and bookmark it for now. I will see you tomorrow. I'm Steve Hicks, and this has been Something's Happening Here. Thank you.